So it's a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Young Miji today uh, for our Global Virus Network uh, Forefront in Virology Seminars. Uh, just, I mean, as always, uh, some of the attendees may not really be aware of what the Global Virus Network is about. So very briefly, this is a network of uh, now about 65 research centers and 12 affiliate centers worldwide. And um, this is really a science-driven and independent network uh, which combines activities on research, on education and training and on advocacy. You can find all the information on our website. We have now also a specific web page on the COVID-19 with both the uh, really daily updated information on the variants, on the vaccines, and also questions and answers. And you are most welcome to have a look at it and to make comments and to take advantage of it. This is what we hope. And in the context of the Global Virus Network, we have this series of webinars. And again, it is our pleasure today uh, to uh, welcome Dr. Young Miji. Uh, Dr. Young Miji is currently the CEO of the Pasteur Institute in South Korea. And I had the pleasure to meet her in previous positions. Um, she is an MD PhD, uh, MD obtained at the College of Medicine in the uh, Seoul National University. And uh, she has also a training and a diploma in medical microbiology at the London School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine and a PhD at the London University. Uh, she has always played an important role as an advisor for WHO activities, both at the global level and at the regional level. And she has been also the director of the Infectious Disease Division at the Korean CDC. And now, as I said, she's the director, the CEO of the Pasteur Institute uh, in South Korea. And the uh, international network of Pasteur Institute is a member of the Global Virus Network. And so Dr. Young Michi is uh, the of one of the uh, GVN centers. So, Dr. Young Michi, it's a pleasure to, to welcome you for this seminar. Thank you very much uh, for your very kind introduction. Uh, good morning, good uh, afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I want to thank you for today's opportunity to share the uh, what Korea uh, uh, IP uh, IP Korea has been doing in terms of um, uh, COVID nineteen research. So, let me just share my slide with you. So I want to start with the COVID-19 situation in Korea. Um, so Korea is now experiencing fourth wave, that is biggest uh, wave since pandemic began last year, uh, with uh, daily new cases of uh, around uh, 1,700 to 2,000 per day, and daily death number ranging uh, uh, around three to 10. And so far we have uh, two, 147,000 uh, cases and uh, with uh, around uh, 0.92 mortality rate, uh, which is relatively low. And we also have widespread Delta variant now uh, representing about 90% of uh, uh, the uh, uh, sequenced cases. And this is even higher uh, from imported cases uh, representing 98%. And if you see the vaccination rate in Korea, uh, we now have achieved 55% uh, of for the uh, first vaccination at least. Uh, among those people, 28% uh, completed vaccination. Uh, we are using four different kinds of vaccine, as you can see. 
But at the beginning, we have uh, rather started with AstraZeneca with a long interval between two vaccines. And that's, that's the reason we now have relatively low uh, vaccination, full vaccination rate. And government uh, target is achieving uh, full vaccination of uh, 70 to 80 percent of whole population uh, by the end of October. So um, if you see our organization, IP Korea, we have a discovery biology division and translational research division. So uh, out of those uh, divisions, we have four teams involved in COVID-19 research. So genetic virus lab and viral immunology lab from the discovery biology division and screening platform, uh, screening discovery platform team and medicinal chemistry team are, are, are also involved in the COVID-19 research. So four teams are working very closely uh, for the COVID-19 uh, research uh, since last year. So uh, genetic virus lab uh, is virology lab working on uh, developing assays and also mechanism of action studies. And screening discovery platform team is working on developing high throughput screening format uh, with automation and performing a screening analysis in a large scale. Uh, and medicinal chemistry team is working on chem informatics and library selection, as well as compound design and synthesis. And lastly, uh, viral immunology lab is, this is a new lab uh, established last year. Uh, they're working on immune responses and immune, immunopathology of uh, viral infection. So in terms of infrastructure, we do have a two high uh, content screening system in our bio biosafety level uh, two lab and one, another one system in uh, biological safety level three lab. And we do have diverse set of uh, compound library, uh, including legacy and, uh, and also 2015 uh, ones we newly purchased and also Medicam uh, library, which we uh, uh, synthesize for uh, di different uh, diseases. And we have pilot libraries of uh, FDA approved drugs and bioactives. And this, among this we have used for the initial screening of the um, against SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2, um, um, adopting drug uh, repositioning strategy uh, since last year. And we also have natural product collections. So since the pandemic began last year, we quickly adopted drug repositioning strategy, since this is considered as a best strategy to develop the therapeutic in a short time uh, as it can skip uh, early basic research uh, step. So we uh, screened uh, around 3000 FDA approved drug against SARS-CoV-1 and 2, and we were able to identify 20 plus uh, drugs with uh, excellent antiviral activities using our cell-based uh, phenomic screening. So we started with screening of uh, FDA approved drugs against SARS-CoV-1, which we received from Hong Kong Pasteur Institute. Uh, so we screened uh, 3000 FDA and ID IND approved drug uh, library and selected 35 uh, drugs. Uh, and then we also um, added uh, 13 drugs uh, proposed by uh, an infectious disease specialist in Korea. So uh, overall, we have selected 48 drugs for screening against SARS-CoV-2. So if you see the timeline of drug repositioning in our institute uh, last year, uh, from the time we have obtained the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus from Korea CDC in February, till we identify 25 drug candidates out of uh, 48 pre-selected candidates, which I mentioned earlier in March, it took about uh, four weeks and the manuscript on this study was uh, uploaded uh, just a few days after. So probably this was uh, one of the earliest um, uh, results uh, adopting a drug discovery, uh, the drug repositioning uh, strategy last year. So from the screening and also additional analysis, we selected four uh, drug candidates for SARS-CoV-2. 
So cyclosamide is um, uh, the inhalation uh, treatment drug for the asthma uh, with the dual roles of uh, antiviral activities as well as anti-inflammatory activities. And niclosamide is antiparasite drug with prospectum antiviral effect, but it has a problem of poor absorption. So uh, some companies are trying to improve the absorption of this drug. And, and then lafamostat and camostat are the pancreatitis drug which can block virus entry as an inhibitor of transmembrane uh, proteasterin subtype 2. Uh, and nafamostat is IV drug and camostat is used as, uh, as oral drug. So uh, after we selected those four uh, drugs uh, to pursue clinical trials, uh, we uh, several the clinical trials have been ongoing. So among those trials, uh, phase two cyclosonide uh, uh, clinical trial has been completed in Korea, and also Nafamostat phase two clinical trial in Russia has been completed. So uh, the, the next steps are being planned for those drugs. And also Nafamostat and, and Camostat uh, clinical trials are mainly phase two and phase three are ongoing in Korea as well as in Senegal. Uh, in collaboration with uh, Dr. Uh, Amadou So, and, um, and also in Mexico, and also the part of uh, ASCOT uh, clinical trial uh, coordinated by Australia uh, Peter Doherty Institute. So if you see the result of cyclosonide at uh, the uh, IVS code uh, clinical trial completed in Korea, uh, we have enrolled uh, 68 uh, mild to moderate uh, cases, and the 61 cases were in included in the analysis. And there was 35 uh, people given um, cyclonocyte, and uh, 26 were given standard care without cyclosonide. And the result I showed cyclonocyte inhalation was able to shorten the SARS CoV 2 viral shedding duration. It may inhibit progression to acute respiratory failure in a patient with a mild to moderate um, COVID-19. So you can see the uh, CT value uh, difference from day one to day 14 uh, between two groups. And we have also um, uh, tested those drugs selected against the uh, SARS-CoV-2 variant, uh, uh, alpha and beta variant. Um, so in vitro analysis uh, showed that the drugs targeting uh, the, the transmembrane protein serin, uh, uh, including camostat and afamostat we have selected, and also uh, RDLP, including lambdasphere, and, uh, and niclosamide and cyclonocyte were equally uh, effective against uh, those alpha and beta uh, variant in, uh, in our um, hands. So as a summary and uh, the plan for the uh, part one, we uh, developed a safe for antiviral drug screening for COVID-19 therapeutics development. Uh, we have adopted a drug repositioning strategy and uh, clinical trials of those selected candidates are ongoing in Korea as well as other countries. As a future plan, we uh, will be conducting the mechanism of action study, uh, also in vivo efficacy study in mice. So after we develop uh, such uh, assays in uh, genotic virus lab, this uh, STP team was able to adopt this assay into high throughput screening uh, platform with automation in uh, 384 wells. Uh, those procedures include including the seeding the cells and the compound transfer uh, as well as virus isolation uh, inoculation. So uh, the our past experience with SARS-CoV-1 and MERS uh, enabled us to rapidly build new assays for COVID-19. So those uh, uh, established assay was uh, used uh, extensively by the uh, researchers uh, in Korea as well as uh, other countries. So we all know that uh, there is urgent uh, need uh, for developing um, oral antivirus, like we have Tamiflu uh, for influenza. So Pfizer, uh, as you all know, de is developing the um, 
oral drug targeting three uh, CR proteins and the global clinical uh, phase two and three uh, trials ongoing that it also include hospitals in, in Korea. So in addition to the drug repositioning strategy, uh, the, the um, four teams in our uh, institute are working closely to develop novel broad spectrum anti-coronavirus agent. So MC team and STP team are working together to screen the diverse set of libraries against SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2 uh, original screen and variant. So those uh, set include the, the MC library, which is the uh, proprietary library that the MC team synthesized for other purposes, uh, and also the commercial library, which we purchased in 2015. So once we uh, uh, con conduct cell-based high throughput uh, screening for SARS-CoV-1 and 2, the selected uh, candidate will be confirmed with CALU3 cells, which is uh, human lung cells infected with the uh, uh, original strain and the variant. So these uh, three teams are working together to select a, a novel scaffold to develop a broad spectrum pan coronavirus drug candidates. So let me show you some initial results uh, by a medicinal chemistry team. So they, as I mentioned, they have this empty library. They have synthesized for some other purposes like cancer, HBB, HCB, HIV, and etc. So in that library, um, they have um, 9,500 uh, compounds with known structure activity relationship. And among them, um, 2,300 uh, uh, compounds with known um, pharmacokinetics data. Uh, so uh, the medicinal chemistry team has screened uh, 8,521 compounds, and out of those compounds, uh, the 437 compounds um, had greater than 90 plus percent inhibition threshold, so that was about 5.1 percent hit. Uh, so, as a summary and plan of this part, so MC team is applying two uh, approaches. So one is the MC library, proprietary li library they uh, synthesize for other purpose as repositioning uh, they're using for the uh, COVID-19 uh, drug uh, development. So those uh, library will be screened uh, uh, through the high throughput uh, screening platform. And the other uh, approach is uh, um, the screening commercial uh, library, which we purchased in 2015. And this will be initially screened uh, by target-based virtual screening, targeting MPRO and RDLP of, of coronavirus. And, and selected ones will be screened again with high throughput screening. And from those two flow, the, the, uh, the compounds will be conformed with the um, additional assay uh, with color 3 cells uh, for the antiviral activity to select the hits for uh, drug discovery. So in, in the, those yellow ones are in plan. Now the final part of the, um, the research is immunological uh, as the analysis of COVID-19 vaccine is uh, in Korea. So this is in collaboration with Asa Medical Center, Dr. Song Han Kim, and Korea Institute uh, of Radiological and Medical Sciences. So uh, with this uh, with this project, we are investigating immune responses of vaccinated group, either infection naive or recovered uh, population, by measuring antibody and tissue responses of different vaccine platform uh, of Pfizer, uh, either Pfizer or AstraZeneca vaccines. And we have a long-term follow-up plan of those uh, uh, groups uh, for the immunological um, uh, memory after the vaccination. So let me show some of the uh, results from those collaboration with Atom Medical Center. Uh, so this is being published in Journal of Infection. So we, we measured a level of a specific um, the spike-specific IgG and neutralizing antibody as well as T cell responses after single dose of uh, AstraZeneca vaccination. So here uh, the IPK has uh, con conducted the micro-neutralization 
while Asam Medical Center uh, conducted T cell assay by Alice Pot and also measured IgG. Um, and here, uh, the red circle represent the uh, past infection group, and uh, black circle represent infection naive group. So here, uh, if you see A, B, it shows uh, antibody response uh, of the IgG and neutralized antibody. So in individuals with the past infection indicated in a uh, red uh, uh, circle quickly develop both uh, IgG specific uh, I, uh, uh, spike protein IgG and neutralize antibody, uh, while the infection naive group um, slowly developed the antibody from week one to week three for both uh, IgG and neutralizing antibody. And if you see the uh, interferon gamma producing T cell responses, uh, these T cell responses were higher in past infection group indicated in red uh, at baseline and week one, but did not show significant difference at week two and three among two groups. And low graph shows reactor genesis. Uh, so uh, if, if you compare two groups, you can see probably some tendency of higher uh, frequency of symptoms among infection naive, but this difference was not statistically uh, significant if you see the p-value. So, uh, so in general, reactor genesis was considered as uh, um, similar between two groups. The next one also is the result of the collaboration with the Asa Medical Center. So here we are comparing antibody and T cell responses induced by single doses of AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines. Uh, so we had uh, 40 AstraZeneca vaccines and 36 Pfizer vaccines. So those are actually the Haskell workers. So here uh, also we have uh, performed my, micro utilization while Asan Medical Center conducted Alice Pot and uh, IgG assay. So if you see the result uh, here, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine is indicated as blue dot and uh, uh, Pfizer vaccine is as red dot, red, red circle. So after first dose of um, the Pfizer vaccination, faster and stronger uh, uh, antibody response was induced than AstraZeneca at three weeks. Uh, can you see? Oh, yeah. So at three weeks um, after the first vaccination, uh, both IgG and neutralizing antibody level was significantly higher in, uh, in Pfizer uh, vaccines than AstraZeneca. So if you see the T cell responses, uh, T cell responses were rapid, rapidly induced by Pfizer vaccines. Pfizer vaccines peaked at uh, after two weeks, but uh, were rather similar up to two weeks uh, in uh, in AstraZeneca and vaccine uh, and, and Pfizer vaccines. And another study is also a similar study with uh, some other institute, a uh, Korea Institute of Radiological and Medical Sciences. Here we are doing similar study, but uh, IPK is conducting both antibody and T cell assays. But there is some initial results uh, showing the uh, IgG level after the first uh, vaccination, first dose vaccination with AstraZeneca and Pfizer, you can see higher. Uh, level of uh, uh, IgG um, with uh, Pfizer vaccines and the, uh, the with Pfizer vaccine first dose and second dose you can see some um, increase of the IgG level. So we will have we have a plan to, to follow up uh, those vaccines uh, for at least one year uh, to see long-term responses. So as a, a summary and future plan for uh, this part, uh, we are evaluating immunogenicity of COVID-19 vaccine, uh, vaccines, both uh, antibody and T cell responses, and assessing long-term immunological uh, memory. And as a uh, future plan, uh, the uh, VARA immunology team has a plan to screen a novel vaccine um, adjuvant and discovering molecular and cellular mechanism of different vaccine platforms and investigating immunopathology of respiratory viral infections 
including COVID-19 and influenza. Uh, so let me just summarize my talk and present the future plan. So since uh, the pandemic began last year, we uh, quickly uh, adopted drug repositioning strategy by screening FDA approved drugs. Uh, but we also uh, trying to identify um, novel uh, drug, uh, which can work broad spectrum, work as a broad spectrum uh, coronavirus antivirus. And we also have established high throughput screening uh, platform for drug discovery and, uh, and also measuring immunological uh, responses of uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, vaccines. In terms of infrastructure, we are upgrading biosafety level three facility to increase screening, our screening capacities and further engaging with uh, uh, global R&D partners. As ongoing uh, future uh, research, uh, we are expanding SARS-CoV-2 models, including variant testing and immunologic profile testing of vaccines. Uh, we have uh, planned to, to follow long-term um, uh, responses uh, and also clinical samples for vaccine R&D, uh, especially for those vaccines developed in Korea. Uh, and as I mentioned, we are also trying to identify broad-spectrum novel uh, pan coronavirus drug candidate by, by screening our own uh, library as well as some other commercial um, libraries. As a future from, uh, we are establishing AI-driven uh, drug discovery omics program uh, in collaboration with IP Paris. And um, in, uh, with collaboration with global partners, uh, we uh, want to establish integrated drug uh, discovery pi pipeline for pandemic responses uh, in the future. Finally, I want to thank our research collaboration partners in Korea, uh, also international partners, and our main funders, Ministry of Science and ICT, and uh, National Research Foundation of Korea. So in my presentation today, uh, I, I tried to uh, provide uh, some introductory uh, contents of our, our COVID-19 research and IPK. I hope that there will be additional opportunities in the future that uh, our team leaders can present more detailed uh, research data in the future. So I want to thank you again. Uh, I, I look forward to, to further collaboration with uh, other GDN members. Thank you.